The story begins as our protagonist, Hope Mikkelsen, describes herself as a student of the Salvator Boarding School. It is a private boarding school in Mystic Falls, Virginia for young witches, werewolves, and vampires. Hope also reveals that she is a daughter of the Mikkelsen family, the first vampire family from whom all vampires have descended. However, the Mikkelsons are also infamous for giving in to their basic instincts, causing harm and destruction to other people. Elsewhere at the All Saints Church in Atlanta, a young boy named Landon Kirby argues with his foster brother Raphael Waith. Unbeknownst to both of them, their parents think Raphael is possessed and have brought him to the church for an exorcism. However, they do not realize that Raphael is a werewolf, and he is about to transform for the first time. Just then, Hope and Alaric Saltzman, the headmaster of Salvador Boarding School, arrive at the church to save Raphael. Hope uses her magic to open the chain doors of the church, subduing Hector, his wife, and Father Pietro with a sleeping spell. They then chain Raphael up just as he is about to transform. After the transformation is over, Hope and Alaric take the two brothers to the Salvador School. At the school, two students and twins Josie and Lizzie Saltzman give Raphael a tour of the boarding school, while Alaric asks Landon a few questions. Josie and Lizzie show Raphael the various classes and the werewolf pack. In the office, Alaric reveals to Landon that the school is a haven for supernatural beings. However, the residents of Mystic Falls think they're a fancy school for troubled rich kids. Following this, Alaric explains that the werewolf gene isn't activated until someone is killed and asks Landon if Raphael has killed someone recently. Landon reveals that Raphael was recently involved in a car accident with his girlfriend which unfortunately killed the latter. Having found out everything he needs to know, Alaric brings MG, a vampire student who tries to use his powers to compel Landon to forget everything he has learned about the school. However, MG is unable to compel Landon, and Alaric resorts to locking him in the cellar. Later at the school's quarry, Alaric questions whether there was ever anything going on between Landon and Hope. However, she simply adds that she liked him, but he was a normal human being. Before she can explain further, Josie interrupts the two, telling them that there is a problem with Lizzie. In the kitchen, Alaric finds Lizzie. She looks overwhelmed with emotion and uses her magic to throw around plates and furniture all over the place. Blinded by her rage, she almost hits Alaric with one of the school knives, but is able to stop it just in time. Later that afternoon, Landon is let out of the cellar until a final decision is made on whether he can stay at the school or has to leave. Following this, Hope takes Landon to the Stefan Salvador Memorial Library. It houses several artifacts from supernatural history, including a silver knife with supernatural powers. There, she reveals parts of her history to Landon, including the history of her father, an original vampire, and her mother, a werewolf alpha. She explains that the majority of her family are not around anymore, but she is the product of their species, a tribrid. The tribrid has the abilities of all three supernatural beings, witches, werewolves, and vampires. Hope then uses her magic to turn the ceiling into a starry night, hoping that this will help Landon sleep. Instead, Landon kisses her as he wants to cherish this moment. The next morning, Landon meets with Alaric in his office in order to prepare for his departure from the Salvador School. However, he asks if it would be possible for him to stay, much to Alaric's surprise. Alaric explains that the school is dangerous for humans, and therefore he cannot allow him to stay. With this, MG uses his magic and wipes away Landon's memories of the previous couple of days, and the existence of supernatural creatures that reside at the Salvador School. Landon then leaves the school after visiting his foster brother Raphael. Next, Alaric enters the Stefan Salvador Library to speak with the librarian Dorian. Dorian reveals that an ancient knife that Landon had been looking at the previous night is now missing. Dorian explains that he does not know the origins of the knife, but it is dated from the 12th century. Following this, Alaric meets Hope outside on the school grounds, revealing that the knife is missing. Hope is reluctant to believe that Landon has stolen the knife, asking Alaric how he knows that Landon is the suspect. Fearing that the memory wiping has not taken effect, and that Landon may expose the school, Alaric calls an assembly in which he explains that they must immediately find Landon. If they don't, their secrets could be revealed to the public. That afternoon, Hope approaches Josie's room in an attempt to ask her for help. She reveals that she knows a way to track Landon, but involves using dark magic. Slightly spooked by the suggestion, Josie reminds her that dark magic is prohibited at the school, that she eventually agrees to do the spell with Hope and the two sit on the floor with open spellbooks. Hope sacrifices a rat to fuel the spell, which allows them to see flashes of Landon on a public bus heading along Route 29. In the midst of the flashes, the two also see Landon holding the knife, but it begins to glow red, blinding both Hope and Josie and ending the vision. The scene then quickly shifts to Route 29, near the Virginia State Line Highway. Matt Donovan, 
The Sheriff of Mystic Falls attends to the scene of a bus explosion. It is the same bus that Landon was in. Alaric and Hope are also present at the scene and question what happened to the bus. The Sheriff admits that he doesn't have an answer, but the local police department believes that it was a freak chemical spill. Just then, a voiceover from Hope reveals that Landon is not the hero of her story as much as she thought and wished him to be. Following Landon leaving the school with the supernatural knife, Hope meets with the guidance counselor, Emma. She questions why Hope was using dark magic the previous night, something that is banned on school grounds. She further questions if anyone aided Hope with the spell, causing a flashback to the previous night in which Josie Saltzman helped her perform the spell. But Hope does not reveal this to Emma and lies that she acted alone. While heading out to find Landon, Hope notices Raphael under a car, adjusting the sway bar. He tells Hope that he knows they are going after Landon, and will not fix the car unless he can go too. Hope tells Raphael to stay out of it as Landon is a thief. However, Raphael remarks that it was just a stupid knife, a remark that annoys Hope who reveals that nothing in the school is stupid. Raphael does not seem to quit, and Hope shows him the vision that she saw the previous night of Landon blowing up the bus full of people. Raphael is shocked but tries to convince Hope that it wasn't Landon, as he knows him. Despite this, Alaric allows Raphael to come with them on the trip. On Route 29, Alaric, Hope and Raphael pull over at the site of the explosion to look for clues. Hope doesn't see the point as she believes that Landon could be anywhere given the full day lead he has on them. However, Raphael argues that Landon doesn't have any reason to run so he should be nearby. Suddenly, Alaric hears a scream coming from the woods, and they quickly rush towards it. Soon they come across a small woman dressed in a white dress hiding behind a tree. The woman looks scared and they quickly realize that she survived the exploding bus and needs medical attention. Alaric then orders Raphael and Hope to walk on but to not engage while he gets the woman's help. In the woods off Route 29, Raphael asks what exactly happened on the bus. Hope admits that she doesn't exactly know all the details, but it seems like it blew up from the inside. Raphael persists in saying that he doesn't believe Landon to be responsible, as he has been close with him all of his life. But Hope dismisses him, revealing that Landon is in the nearby cellar that they are approaching. In a stern voice, she says she will allow Raphael three minutes to confront Landon before she does. Raphael then takes the opportunity to enter the cellar and ask Landon what happened. But Landon insists that he is not responsible, and doesn't know what happened or who is at fault. Suddenly, Hope enters the cellar and questions who is responsible if not him. Enraged, she questions where the knife is, but Landon admits that he dropped it while running. This angers Hope even more and she asks who asks who is responsible for the explosion one more time. Eventually, Landon reveals that there was a girl. In the same woods, Alaric is still attempting to make his way to the highway and contact medical help for the mysterious woman. He raises his phone to call Dorian, an intern and librarian at the school. But the woman grabs his phone and puts it into the pocket of her dress. When Alaric tries to take back the phone, the woman takes his watch and turns to run, with Alaric chasing after her. He finally catches up grabbing the woman's arm to turn her around, which causes her to growl, and her eyes flash a bright orange. It seems as though the woman is about to scream, but instead exhales a stream of fire. This forces Alaric to duck away from the woman to safety. When he returns to his feet, the woman has vanished before him, leaving him alone in the woods. After Alaric gathers himself, he questions Dorian about his recent encounter over the phone. Alaric thinks that she could be a pyromancer, but Dorian thinks otherwise. He reveals that there are only a couple of dozen pyromancers left, and they are mostly found in East Asia. However, Dorian tells him that he will do some research and call him back with a definitive answer. In the cellar, Hope finds it hard to believe that a fire-breathing woman burned the bus, but somehow Landon escaped. She looks to Raphael to back her up, but he admits that he believes Landon. But their conversation is interrupted by Alaric who runs into the cellar shouting that there is a fire-breathing woman running about the place. He warns them that they need to look for the knife. So they leave the cellar but are forced back inside when the woman approaches and begins to breathe fire on them. Hope uses her magic to negate the fire in the cellar while Alaric questions where the knife is. To everyone's surprise, Landon pulls the knife from his pocket, admitting that he panicked when they first asked. Alaric then calls Dorian for an update, but is surprised and dumbfounded when Dorian suggests that the woman is a dragon. Dorian reveals that a sword is needed to kill the dragon, but Hope suggests that they use the knife instead. Hope and Raphael then leave the cellar and confront the woman, with Hope using her magic to block the oncoming fire from the dragon. All the while, Raphael sneaks up behind her, plunging the knife into her chest, seemingly killing her. Later, Dorian calls Alaric, telling them that they have to stab the dragon in the soft spot to kill her. And soon enough, the woman comes back to life in dragon form, spreading her wings. At this point, Landon, Raphael and Hope emerge from the cellar with shovels to bury the dragon. 
but they are shocked to see the dragon in full form. Hope has an idea and tells Alaric and the others to leave for the car while she takes care of the dragon. When the dragon circles back around, Hope uses a spell which hurts the dragon who screeches before turning back into her human form. Hope questions the woman over what she wants with the knife, but the woman attempts to breathe fire at Hope once again, and Alaric stabs her in the throat, killing her for good. Having witnessed the events unfolding with Hope and the dragon, Alaric questions Hope on the spell she used, citing that it isn't earth magic. Hope remarks that it wasn't an earth magic problem, but Alaric rebukes her, reiterating that dark magic is banned because it is infectious. Alaric realizes that Hope had already learned the spell before knowing that they were coming up against a dragon. He deduces that she must have had other plans for the spell. Eventually, Hope admits her anger towards Landon, and his actions pushed her towards dark magic. Alaric admits that the anger and vengeance she feels is from her father, Klaus, but he will not allow it to be her. Alaric and Hope get back to the car to find a note on the windshield from Landon and Raphael who have fled in fear of separation. A few hours later, Alaric arrives back at the school but does not enter the premises. Instead, he stands at the gates and begins to rattle them to test if they lock properly. Dorian asks if he is worried about people getting out, but Alaric admits that he is worried about people getting in. They have gotten cozy at the school over the years and forgotten what is truly outside the walls. In a flashback scene in 14th century France, two men walk through a forest late at night towards an altar. On the altar lies the supernatural knife that Landon stole from the Salvador school previously. Behind the altar stands a gargoyle holding a sword, the same gargoyle that stands on the Salvador school's estate. One of the men warns that they should leave, fearing the gargoyle, named the Guardian, will awaken. The other man dismisses him, citing that the Guardian is a fairy tale to scare children. As the two men approach the altar, they hear a sound behind them and notice that the gargoyle no longer stands where it once did. The gargoyle appears before them, killing both of them mercilessly. Back in the present, Dorian teaches a spell casting class at the Salvador School. Before Dorian can begin to teach, a note materializes, summoning Lizzie, Josie, and Hope to Alaric's office. The trio joins Alaric in the library who reveals that they are being punished for starting a brawl at the football match the previous day. The Salvador bus stops at Mystic Falls Town Square, where it is revealed that the punishment is cleaning the square. Lizzie pokes Hope for information on what she is being punished for as Alaric never gets mad at her, but Hope refuses to reveal anything. In the woods off Route 29, Landon and Raphael are seated around a self-made campfire roasting a rabbit. They joke about catching something better next time. When Landon thanks Raphael for sticking with him and leaving the school, Landon admits that he thinks the school was good for him. But Raphael remarks that the two stick together. Landon is worried about Hope's feelings towards him and fears that she may hate him. In response, Raphael suggests that he just tell the truth about stealing the knife. But Landon admits that he can't, despite having tried. Landon then reveals that he was attracted to the knife as though it wanted him to steal it. Elsewhere, Alaric sits in his office examining the knife when he is interrupted by Dorian's wife, Emma Tigg. She questions why he has not been present at his counseling, remarking that it is meant to be mandatory for all students and staff. Alaric tries to dismiss her, citing that he is trying to figure out the supernatural knife. He adds that whoever wields it has the power to destroy the world. This prompts Emma to suggest that Alaric destroy the knife as soon as possible. Alaric admits that he has tried to but the knife is indestructible, even to explosives and hydrochloric acid. In the garden, a young student, Pedro, tells his teacher Lizzie that the gargoyle statue behind her has moved. She is initially hesitant to believe him, but when she turns around, she sees that the statue has actually moved. When she faces Pedro again, she sees that the gargoyle is moving towards him with a red glow in his eyes. Lizzie siphons some of Pedro's magic before sending him to find Alaric quickly. With Pedro safe, Lizzie raises her hands and casts a spell before the gargoyle spreads its wings, forcing Lizzie to shriek loudly and curl into a ball. Shortly after, Alaric arrives and notices Lizzie on the floor, unable to move or communicate. Pedro reveals that the statue has done something to her. Alaric gathers some of the students around Lizzie along with Emma to watch over her while he calls Dorian. He asks Dorian what he knows about gargoyles, specifically the legend of the gargoyle Petrotho, as he believes that he has poisoned Lizzie. Dorian says he will call back when he has done the research. In a downtown area, Landon and Raphael have gathered a crowd of people to watch Raphael jump from building to building. The crowd does not believe that Raphael can make the jump. However, he surprises them when he uses his werewolf agility and is able to make the rather large jump. This is revealed to be how Landon and Raphael are making enough money to survive as they take bets on the situation. A man in the crowd witnesses the situation unfolding before him 
and sends a text message to an unknown number reading they're here. Back at the school, Alaric orders that the school is on lockdown and everyone is to return to their rooms. Alaric rushes to his office, unlocking his drawer and pulling out the supernatural knife. When he leaves his office, he comes face to face with the gargoyle in the halls. Alaric attempts to stab the gargoyle with the knife, but the gargoyle is able to sense this and grabs his arm, sneering at him. Elsewhere, Landon counts the money they have made but notices a $5 bill in the stack that has a message scrawled in bright red ink, run, wolf, or die. Alarmed, Landon begins to look around to see if anyone has followed them into the woods. Landon doesn't want to worry Raphael, and admits that everything is fine but notices Hope standing in the distance in what seems to be an astral projection. He exclaims her name, but she disappears. The scene quickly shifts to Mystic Falls, where Hope questions why Josie stopped the projection spell. Josie admits that she has twin pain which usually means that Lizzie is in trouble. Hope and Josie try to leave back to the school, but Dorian refuses to let them go, citing that Alaric is with Lizzie and everything is under control, much to Hope's dismay. Back in the woods, Raphael is sure he has found a place for them to camp, but Landon tells them that they should keep moving. Before Raphael is able to say anything otherwise, the two are shot in the neck by tranquilizer darts and fall unconscious. When they awake, they are greeted by a man named Jeremy Gilbert, who promises the two that they have nothing to fear from him and that he is their new best friend. Elsewhere, the gargoyle realizes that he cannot leave the school grounds, thanks to Lizzie's spell. So, he returns to the school. He approaches the room in which Emma is hiding Lizzie and the children. Emma casts a cloaking spell on them, making herself and the children invisible. The gargoyle moves on believing the room to be empty. Later, Hope and Josie return to the school as night falls, much to Alaric's dismay. Hope reveals that they took the protection barrier down to enter the school so the monster can leave, and Alaric admits that the gargoyle attacked him and took the knife. They decide that they must find the monster before he leaves the school grounds. Jeremy reveals to Landon and Raphael that he is a hunter who works for Alaric sometimes. Jeremy tells Raphael that he will take him back to the school shortly, and Landon tells him to go and leave him behind. Raphael declines, but Landon is able to convince him as he believes the school is good for him. Back at the school, Josie, Alaric, and Hope confront the gargoyle. Hope asks Josie to help her with a spell and the two are eventually able to kill it. Later, in Alaric's office, he reveals to Hope that the gargoyle used to protect a village of people who possessed a powerful relic, the supernatural knife. He believes that the gargoyle loved humanity and vowed never to harm them but fight evil on their behalf. The gargoyle must have seen Alaric as a human he needed to protect. Alaric gathers the school in the hall, announcing that they are being confronted with demons and creatures that they never thought possible. But he vows to find out their origins and protect the students of the school. In a flash forward, he hands the knife to Dorian to dispose of and when the scene returns to the hall, he asks that the students of the school look out for each other in times of need. In the hall, Matt Donovan gives an announcement that two students of another school, Dana Lillian and Sasha Stotrox didn't return home last night. He passes photographs around the school and admits that Dana is notorious for skipping school but that it is a first and unusual for Sasha. Alaric worries that the girls have been taken by monsters. He asks for volunteers to go to Mystic Falls under the guise of an exchange program to search for the two girls and investigate their disappearance. Caleb, MG, Lizzie and Hope volunteer for the program. Elsewhere, Landon is on edge when Raphael returns to their room, questioning if anybody said anything about him or if they have decided his future at the school. Raphael admits that he is not the topic of conversation, as there is a missing girl. Alaric appears in the doorway not long after asking for Landon's help with something. This is later revealed to be Landon's help with the exchange program, as he is seen getting off the Salvator bus at Mystic Falls High School. In Mystic Falls, Landon attempts to give Hope a tour of the normal human school. However, she is approached by a girl, Cheryl, who asks if Landon is bothering her. Hope then leaves with the new girl not long after, leaving Landon alone in the hallway. In the woods, Matt and Alaric finally find Dana's car, and nearby they notice a body lying on the ground. They check the body out, which has colorless skin, but is confirmed to be Dana. Matt is first confused at the situation as he believes the monsters to be after the supernatural knife. His suspicions are confirmed when he notices a vampire bite on Dana's neck, suspecting the Salvador School students are involved. At Mystic Falls High School, MG's phone begins to ring, and it is Alaric, who wants to speak with the entire group. MG admits that they have all gone their separate ways in order to search. Enraged, Alaric reveals that Dana is dead and was killed by a vampire. He adds that he told Matt that the school had nothing to do with it, but he needs to know if MG or other students have heard anything. But MG says he has no idea about the incident, 
Despite clearly knowing that Caleb is feeding in the woods, Alaric persists to say that the Salvator kids had nothing to do with the murder. But Matt does not believe him and gestures towards Dana's body, which to their surprise is no longer there. Elsewhere, Hope and Landon follow a girl who arrives at the stoner pit to speak with Caleb. Caleb removes the scarf from around the girl's neck revealing bite marks. He compels her not to be afraid, but before he can feed Hope arrives warning him against it. Lizzie and MG arrive shortly after and Caleb is confused and feels betrayed that MG would rat him out. Lizzie confronts Caleb, accusing him of killing Dana, but Caleb denies killing her and warns the group to leave him alone. Lizzie uses her magic to trap Caleb when he tries to run away, but Landon tells the gang that he is more than likely telling the truth. To their surprise, Dana approaches from the woods, groaning and falling to her knees before their eyes. The group takes Dana to a picnic bench, asking what she remembers about the previous night. Dana tells them that they were on their way to graffiti the Salvador school, but the only thing she remembers after that is waking in a ditch. She is horrified a couple of seconds later when she notices the bite on her neck, but Lizzie passes it off as a hickey, calling Dana slutty. Dana tries to leave to speak with the cops, forcing Hope to put a sleeping spell on her. With Dana out, Lizzie accuses Caleb of turning her instead of killing her, but Caleb denies having any part in the incident. In the parking lot at Mystic Falls High School, Landon tries to comprehend what the transition into a vampire entails. Caleb suggests that they just give Dana some human blood. But Hope is against the idea citing that not everyone wants to be supernatural. Lizzie agrees with Hope, suggesting that they give Dana time to consider her options. Landon suggests they tell her the truth and perhaps invite her to the Salvator school, which Lizzie eventually agrees with. Dana quickly begins to vomit, with Hope worrying that she is literally vomiting her guts up and not long after she is reduced to goo on the floor with only an outline of her skin. Hope surmises that it has got to be another monster after the knife, and Caleb is quick to blame the whole scenario on Landon. Landon looks to Hope to back him up, but she looks away, causing Landon to take off on foot while Hope looks on. On the other hand, Josie and Raphael investigate, and find a young woman asleep in the webs on the second floor of the old mill. The woman is revealed to be Sasha, the missing girl. Josie gets trapped in the web when trying to get a better look, and when Raphael tries to pull her free, he too gets trapped. With Dana having turned to flesh before their eyes, the gang are trying to clean up her remains. Suddenly, MG notices a picture of an arachn in the comic book he is reading. He alerts the group, signaling that the creature that took over Dana's appearance could be an arachn. Arachn are ancient spider-like creatures who can take control over the bodies of their victims. Their bite is similar to that of a vampire, but their victims die by excessive vomiting. Lizzie, however, still believes Landon to be responsible. She says they could do a tracking spell if they had something that belonged to whoever committed the crime. Suddenly, Landon emerges with a large chunk of flesh in his hand. He obtained it by punching a creature in the form of one of their friends, Connor. They plan to use this flesh to track the criminal's location. In the mill, Raphael and Josie are trying to escape the spider webs with no luck. Exhausted, Raphael suggests that Josie use magic to free them. She says it is theoretically possible, but she would need to siphon from him but unfortunately cannot move her arms. She leans in and kisses him while simultaneously siphoning magic from him. Before Josie can try and escape, they notice footsteps approaching, and it turns out to be Connor. Raphael calls out to get his attention, and asks that he help free them. The Connor ignores them and takes his true form. The Arachn Spider, Alaric calls Lizzie, having found Dana's remains in the glove compartment of the Salvator bus, asking for an update on the situation. Lizzie tries to lie but is quickly caught out by Alaric, and forced to tell the truth. Alaric does not believe in the comic book theory, and warns them to stay away, but they ignore him. At the mill, Landon arrives in time to distract Arachne, allowing Josie to escape from the webs. Hope also arrives and asks for Josie and Lizzie's help with a spell that will kill Arachne. In the final scene, the trio work together and they are able to kill Arachne and save Sacha from its webs. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.